Okay. Welcome everybody to Get Your YA On um, with our friends from Disney McMillan Union Square, Workman Hachette. We're so excited to have you all here. I know people are still joining, um, but we do want to get started. And uh, we are recording this, so if you do have to jump off, we will share the recording afterwards. Um, I emailed out handouts, a link to handouts to everyone, so hopefully you have those. Let me know in the chat if you didn't get them. And I don't have the link, but I will get it, um, and I will send it out in the chat if we need to. All right, I'm going to kick things off. Let's get started. So I'm Ina Sherman from uh, Disney Publishing. I'm the School and Library Marketing Director, and I'm excited to share some of our upcoming titles from across our imprints, including our newest imprint, Melissa De La Cruz Studio. Also, you'll see I've marked the slides so you can see which titles will have eBooks and audiobooks available. All right, first up, I did want to share some early fall titles that you might have missed, starting with Almost There, which is the 13th installment in the best-selling Twisted Tales series. This twist on The Princess and the Frog asks, what if Tiana made a deal with Dr. Facilier? We're thrilled to add Farrah Rashan to our roster of authors for this incredible series. Anne of Greenville by Mariko Tamaki is the first book that we published from the Melissa De La Cruz Studio imprint. Now, I am possibly the world's biggest Anne of Green Gables fan. I reread the books year after year. I'm just a huge fan. So I was very nervous about this, um, about this, because it's a modern day retelling, but it's amazing. It's so good. Um, this Anne is an ABBA loving singer, actor, writer of disco operas, queer, Japanese American, and she just longs to be understood for her artistic genius. But she suddenly finds herself stuck in middle of nowhere Greenville, starting at a new school. So the book does tackle some difficult subjects like racism, homophobia, and misogyny, but it's still joyful, fun, and swoony, everything you want your Anne to be. Twelfth Grade Night is the first in a new graphic novel series, Arden High. Twelfth Grade Night reimagines the romance of Twelfth Night in a modern day high school. This book is filled with all the humor, unrequited love, and mistaken identity of Shakespeare's original story, but features a gender non-conforming protagonist, and a host of bisexual, lesbian, and queer characters, as well as characters of many races and body types. And Drizzle Dreams and Love Struck Things is by debut author Maya Prasad and is four swoon-worthy love stories about four sisters across four seasons. The Singh sisters help their father, who recently lost his husband, run a small romantic inn on an island off the coast of the Pacific Northwest. The sisters range in age from sophomore in high school to about to head off to college, and each one has a romance of their own, but the book also celebrates the amazing relationship of their family. Moving on, I do want to share some great new stories we have from some of our really popular franchises as well. The Dark Ascension is an all new series that shines a spotlight on the siblings who, in many ways, exerted large influence on the villains' destinies. The Wicked Ones by National Book Award winning author Robin Benway is the story of the very complex sibling rivalry between the two wicked stepsisters from Cinderella. One Girl in All the World is the second book in best-selling author Kendari Blake's new Buffyverse series, featuring the next generation of Scoobies and Slayers who must defeat a powerful new evil in New Sunnydale. And Mackenzie Lee is back with another installment in her Marvel Rebels and Renegades series, this time spotlighting Bucky Barnes, aka fan favorite character, The Winter Soldier. This story is told with two alternating timelines, one with Bucky as a young teen when he's trying to lie his way into the army, and the other showcasing his future as a brainwashed ultimate soldier for Russia, the Winter Soldier. Briarpuff Prep by debut author Brianna Peppins is the story of 14-year-old Avi LeBeau as she heads off to Briarcliff Prep, a historically black boarding school. As scared as she is to say goodbye to her parents and move to Georgia, she knows her fearless big sister Belle will be there to show her the ropes. Before long, Avi settles into life at Briarcliff where while her sister does what she always does, she runs the campus' social scene, especially now that she's dating Logan, the pride and joy of Briarcliff's sibling school, Preston Academy. But something about Logan doesn't sit well with Avi, no matter how many times Belle reassures her that Logan's a good guy. And when Avi stumbles across the truth, her relationship with Belle is put to the test. If Avi reveals what she knows, their sisterhood might never recover. But if she doesn't, she might lose Belle forever. This story is a celebration of sisterhood, self-discovery, and Black joy with an empathetic exploration of teen dating violence in this novel that is, at its heart, a love letter to Black girls. Lumara by Melissa Landers is also set at a boarding school, but things there are a bit different. Talia Morris has no idea her boyfriend Nathaniel is a mystic, 
let alone second in line to the throne of a secretive, aspirational magical community, one no mortal has ever been allowed to step inside. Until now. Nathaniel's cousin is about to be married in the biggest wedding the magical world has ever seen, and he's allowed to bring a date. But when the entire wedding party suddenly falls into an unexplainable coma and the community goes on lockdown, Talia, the outsider, is pegged as the culprit and has to do everything in her meager, non-power to prove her innocence. As she embarks on a journey to find the truth, Talia soon discovers reality is not all it seems, and her past may put her in more danger than she ever imagined. Aruna's Fate by debut author Kaylee Smith is the story of Calliope Rosewood, who's been blessed with unspeakable powers that terrify even the most dangerous witches and fae. She hides her forbidden magic in shame and fear that one wrong touch could send her to her death, but she's concealing an even darker secret. Fate has chosen her as the final prophesied blood warrior, the being destined to start the Fates War, which will decimate her people and eradicate their magic. She's desperate to do whatever it takes to reset her fate, even if it includes journeying into the deadly never-ending forest with her infuriating ex, Ezra, and a witch who just so happens to be Ezra's tempting older brother. Kala will have to fight to forge her own destiny and decide if the risk of choosing herself is worth the possibility of damning everyone else. Live Your Best Live, also by debut author Jesse Weaver. This is our second book from the new Melissa De La Cruz Studio imprint. Social media influencer Summer Cartwright leads a very charmed life. Millions of followers, the hottest designer and vintage clothes at her fingertips, a newly minted book deal, the coolest friends, and until recently, the hottest boyfriend at her uber elite prep school. Every moment of her life has been carefully planned and cultivated to complement her imperfectly perfect persona. She is hashtag living her best life. But when Summer goes missing during her annual Halloween party, and then an unscheduled post appears on her feed stating that she'll be dead within the next five minutes, those closest to her know something isn't quite right or on brand. Grace, Summer's camera shy best friend, Adam, Summer's gamer ex-boyfriend, Lainey, Summer's moody camp roommate, and Cora, an influencer wannabe, all decide to investigate. And when they come upon Summer's lifeless body, they soon realize that no filter is strong enough to mask the lies we tell ourselves. Yalsa Teen's top 10 favorite author, hashtag murder trending author Gretchen McNeil, is back with a new thriller in Three Drops of Blood. This is a YA retelling of Hitchcock's Rear Window. Struggling actress Kate is trying to get her acting career back on track by working at a boring office job at her best friend's father's law firm so she can prove to her parents that she can support herself rather than go back to high school. Now, rather than living life on the big screen, she's stuck filing mundane contracts and watching the people in her office across from hers live their equally boring lives. But when Kate sees things heat up between a woman and her assistant, her new source of entertainment takes a turn for the worse when she witnesses a double murder. Now she must get anyone to believe her and find out who this mystery woman is to get answers. But as she learns more and more and more about the circumstances leading to the gruesome act, she begins to realize that there's a bigger mystery under the surface. There goes the neighborhood, another great debut author, uh, Jade Adia. Ree's neighborhood is fading away. The mom and pop shops of her childhood forced out to make space for an artisanal kombucha brewery here, a hot yoga studio there, and everywhere the feeling that this place is no longer meant for her. Because while their little corner of South LA isn't perfect, to Rhea and her two best friends, it's more important, it's home. But as more white people flock to their latest edgy herby paradise for its cheap rent and sparkling new Whole Foods, more of Rhea's friends and family are pushed out. Until Rhea decides it's time to push back. Armed with their cell phones and a bag of firecrackers, the friends manipulate social media to create the illusion of gang violence in their neighborhood. No one was supposed to get hurt. No one was supposed to die. But is anyone ever really safe when you're fighting power with fear? Now, believe it or not, this book is actually full of hilarious moments, even though it does tackle some very serious subject matter. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to check us out online. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And we do put most of our galleys up on NetGalley and Edelweiss. You can find them there. But we do have small print quantities as well. So if you see something you need, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much. And now I will pass it on to Chris. Thank you very much, Tina. Thanks for getting us all together here. I am now going to share my screen. And here we go. Good afternoon to everyone, or good morning to everyone joining us here today. My name is Chris Vicari, and I represent Union Square and Company, formerly known as Sterling Publishing. We rebranded in January of this year. 
few months ago. We've since published a few titles of interest for your young adult readers. I will start with um, a quick note to a book published with our adult list that just came out, but that Library Journal has just said is, quote, empathetic and sympathetic reading for adults, but has strong crossover appeal for YA readers. It's called You Don't Know What War Is, The Diary of a Young Girl from Ukraine by Yeva Skalietska. She turned 12 on February 14th of this year, living in Kharkiv. 10 days later, Russia invaded Ukraine. She and her family ran to a basement bunker, lived through several bombings and violence, and she began writing a diary the entries of which are here and will certainly resonate as she experiences the war firsthand and flees the country while noting the mental and physical challenges she had to endure, plus the fears for her family members left behind. It's an important and harrowing and firsthand account in an ongoing conflict, but ultimately we think a hopeful memoir by a brave young woman who now lives in Dublin, Ireland. Next, also available now, if you haven't read, it's The Second Death of Edie and Violet Bond. It's Sacramento in 1885. Edie and Violet Bond are 17-year-old twins and powerful mediums, just like their mother was. But their abilities couldn't save them when their mother died, and their father threatened to commit them to a notorious asylum. Now, as runaways, Edie and Violet are part of a traveling spiritualist show. One night, Violet's act goes terribly wrong, and Edie learns that the dark spirit responsible for her mother's death has crossed into the land of the living. The twins will quickly realize that they need to trust one another more than ever if they want to uncover a killer. While writing this edge of your seat gripping fiction, author Amanda Glaze has also weaved together a great mixture of atmosphere and spiritualism, also women's rights and injustice. It's also a novel inspired by her great-great-grandmother, and her twin, who were professional mediums in a spiritualist show, just like the characters in the book. In an early blurb, Nina LaCour, a Prince Award-winning author, called it deliciously chilling. Others have said impressive and eerie or fun and terrifying. Here's a look at some praise we have just received. It just got a starred review and shelf awareness. It was the October pick for the Barnes & Noble YA Book Club. If you haven't had a chance yet, especially if you live in the Sacramento area, I encourage you to take a look at The Second Death of Edie and Violet Bond. If by any chance you're attending the NCTE show in Anaheim, California next week, Amanda will be there signing copies with us. Next is Wait For Me. Author Sarah Shepard has a compelling and stellar record, most notably with her Pretty Little Liars novels. She has compelling binge-worthy teen angst covered in this new book. She introduces us, Casey, a young girl, in control, used to changing up her personality to get what she wants, whether that's getting out of a bill or getting plastic club, club bouncer. But since she's been dating Marcus, the most eligible young bachelor in New York City, she starts hearing voices. Actually, they're more than voices, they're warnings that someone is going to hurt her. A bit petrified, she leaves the city, but soon has a frightening vision that the voice and memories belong to someone who Casey may have pretended to be previously, or maybe there is another otherworldly connection. YA readers certainly love suspense, and this title with its dark romantic plot twists fit right in. Early reviewers said enjoyably twisty and an immersive romantic mystery, said Publishers Weekly. It's Wait For Me by Sarah Shepard, but you don't have to wait because it's available now at your preferred wholesalers. Coming in January, Going Dark by the aforementioned Melissa De La Cruz. She's a YA powerhouse, New York Times bestseller. Her books have sold millions of copies. And her first book with us at Union Square puts it at the top of her game in this YA Gone Girl. It's a story of a beautiful young travel influencer. She's 18 years old. Her name's Amelia Ashley. She was headed out on a trip of a lifetime with her hot boyfriend, handsome and charismatic Josh. But after two weeks abroad, old Josh returns home to California by himself. Josh says he left her all alone, but when no one hears from Amelia for weeks, all signs point to Josh. On top of that, her disappearance re-energizes a different case, a girl who went missing two years ago, a girl who never made headlines or had a trending hashtag. When you add a local hacker, trying to unravel this mystery everyone will be asking in January 2023. Where is Amelia Ashley? Is she truly gone? This is a great white knuckle thriller that will quench the thirst of those who not only want thrillers, but enjoy a lead character willing to cross ambiguous moral lines in order to seek justice. 
Sliding over to nonfiction for a moment. This is a new series from our partners at Sixth and Spring Books. This is the Our Tomorrow series. It is dedicated to inspiring, uplifting, and empowering the next generation of leaders. Good to kick it off with this guy, Michael's Desserts. It's a debut cookbook from Michael C. Platt. Keep in mind when I say debut, he is a teenager, but he's a special kind of teenager. He's a student, he's a baker, he's a food justice advocate. His mission is to bring awareness to food and poverty, also build skills in the kitchen, celebrate history, and inspire activism. He has a business called Michael's Desserts, and it has a one-for-one -one model. Donates a dessert to someone in need for every one sold. With this model, he has served thousands of people in the D.C. metro area, and he has appeared as one of the best kid bakers over the past couple of years on Food Network, Good Morning America, The Rachel Ray Show. He's featured in The Washington Post, too. In this book, the 40 plus recipes include his signature Freedom Fighter cupcakes and others themed around figures from the history of civil rights and activism. That includes Martin Luther King Jr., Maya Angelou, Malala, Harriet Tubman, Jose Andres among them. Each of these recipes features beautiful photography, a list of ingredients, of course, instructions and insightful tips from him. It will make baking not only tons of fun, but it will serve it up with valuable life lessons. Next in the Our Tomorrow series is Books and Bros. Sydney Keys III also has a mission. It's to advocate for African-American literacy, to combat the stereotype that boys don't read as much as girls. He himself started writing when he was about 10 years old, founded Books and Bros, this virtual book club. His passion is getting more representation in the literary space, explaining that, quote, people say we black boys don't like to read, but they give us the most boring books to read. Black boys do like to read but we want books that we can relate to that interest us, end quote. That's why the books he talks about include some of the biggest names in children's literature, including Jason Reynolds, Nick Stone, Angie Thomas, Jerry Craft, Rita Williams Garcia, Kekla Magoon, Ty Allen Jackson, among many others. This book is part biography of, an, of a teen, uh, but also part anthology of book reviews, but 100% beautifully illustrated self-improvement guide built to inspire generations of young men to come. Lastly, in this series, in the months ahead, Kindness is My Hobby. This is an award-winning teen humanitarian. Her name is Ruby Kate Chitsi. She went with her mom one day to work at a local nursing home, and it was there which, where she discovered her superpower, and that superpower is kindness. She's the founder and CEO of Three Wishes for Ruby's Residence. She speaks to kids often about the motivation behind her charity and how kids can get involved. Her program provides seniors with small gifts and a variety of other programs that she and her team created to uplift seniors. So this is her story of becoming an activist for senior citizens through these easy to do youth led charitable acts and offers tips for how other kids can do the same. This will come out in April 23. Ruby was a top finalist for Time Magazine's Kid of the Year recently. She was also named as one of People Magazine's 10 Girls Changing the World. She has raised over $400,000 for her cause in just about three years fulfilled over 25,000 wishes for nursing home seniors. Indeed, kindness is her hobby. Please consider the Our Tomorrow series for your shelves. Next is Lion's Legacy coming in May. Lead character is 17-year-old Tennessee Russo, and Tennessee Russo's life is imploding. His boyfriend has been cheating on him, and all his friends knew about it. That stinks enough. But his friends, well, I expect them to just accept his ex's new relationship and make nice, whatever. So when his father, a famous archeologist and reality show celebrity whom he hasn't seen in two years shows up unexpectedly, offers to take him on an adventure to find the rings of the sacred band of Thebes, it is too enticing to say no. So he heads to Greece with his dad, but he's gonna make it his own adventure. He will navigate ruins. He will decipher ancient riddles. He'll do what he has to do along this path to finding any artifacts related to this troop of ancient Greek soldiers comprised, composed of 150 gay couples. And along the way, he may even enjoy a sweet romance with this Greek translator. But in the end, will his father let him do the right thing with the rings if they find them? Or does his father have a different plan all together. We have received nice advance praise for this book coming in May. It is against this backdrop of a sunlit Greek summer that author Elsie Rosen masterfully weaves together adventure and romance, magic, and a long overlooked chapter in ancient 
history. Take my word that it's a fun adventure. Think Indiana Jones, think the National Treasure film franchises, but also Tennessee Russo brings attention to a fascinating part of history, reclaiming stories. Perfect for fans of Adam Silvera, Becky Albertelli. Um, L.C. Rosen writes books for people of all ages, most recently camp. Next is Dead Endia. Now you may have these books available. You may have these books available on your shelves already, but we will be having them in uh, in spring, uh, and a book three will be coming soon. Um, Dead Endia is a YA graphic novel series. Uh, it's currently streaming on Netflix as Dead End Paranormal Park. It's about the lives of a diverse group of employees of a haunted house, which may or may not serve as a portal to hell. It's got talking pugs. It's got vengeful ghosts. It's got first love. It's a richly imagined world with these relatable and diverse characters. It is action packed. And as Booklist said in a starred review, it's perfect for teens who love macabre humor and heartfelt friendship. We have a line of classics that I wanted to end with. A quick look at our classics line. Should one take hold of the world again? We had a recent surge with persuasion. We have these new hardcovers with dazzling art. I just love the Dracula cover. If you look closely, you will see not only fangs, but you will see a bat in the teeth on our Dracula cover. So cool. These can perhaps serve as your replacement copies or ebook purchases. Many of these, which librarians have told me, have covers that will really draw young adults to classics, especially when your picture of Dorian Gray, I'm told, bears a resemblance to Robert Pattinson. Plus, we have our paperback classics at affordable prices. Get us a look at those. Those are some new ones coming in spring 2023. My friends, don't forget that our books are available for your digital downloads at Edelweiss and NetGalley. Check them out when you can. My friends, those are the books and that's the way it is on Thursday, November 10th, 2022. Thank you for listening. And here is our next speaker. Hello. I am Annie Mazes, and I am getting it together. Hello. <laughs> um, let me just share my screen, and we will, away we go. I'm Annie Mazes. I am with Hachette Book Group, which acquired Workman Publishing about a year ago. So I now get to talk about all of Workman Publishing's books and also Hachette's kids' books. Very exciting. Um, that's my email address, which I will put in the chat after I'm done. Please reach out if you have any questions. Happy to help if I can. First, I just wanted to make mention of some recent YA gems that we've had come out. Slip is from Eisner Award-nominated writer Marika Makula and debut artist Atmaja Pandya. It's an emotional coming-of-age graphic novel for fans of Bloom and Laura Dern Keeps Breaking Up With Me. Right before Jade is about to leave for summer art intensive, her best friend attempts suicide, and how can she focus on herself right now? But at the art farm, Jade's artistic opportunities that have been waiting for her her whole life come into fruition. Um, but then the creatures that she creates out of clay, interestingly enough, come to life as soon as she puts them in the kiln. This is unforgettable and beautiful graphic novel about love, friendship, and self-actualization. How You Grow Wings has been getting so much acclaim. Three-starred reviews. It was a Kirkus Prize finalist. Uh, sisters Chetta and Zam could not be more different. In a turn of good fortune, Zam is invited to live with her aunt's family in the lap of luxury. Jealous, Chetta also leaves home, but to a harder existence that will drive her to some really awful decisions. When the sisters are reunited, Zam alone will recognize just how far Chetta has fallen and Chetta's faith will rest in Zam's hands. This is a story about love and the messy truths that sometimes exist in families. It is about finding family, your found family, um, and the morality is all shades of gray. Dead Flip is from a personal favorite. I know you're not supposed to have favorites, but I love Sarah Farazin. I think she is wonderful. She's a great writer. She's so funny. Dead Flip is something very different from her previous novels. Um, but if you are a YA horror fan, this is for you. Perfect for fans of Stranger Things. Growing up, Corey, Maz, and Sam were inseparable best friends until Sam mysteriously disappears. 
Now it's five years later and Corey and Maz are not speaking anymore. But when Sam returns, still 12 years old, not 17, like his other friends, Maz and Corey are thrown back together to solve the mystery of what happened to Sam the night he went missing. Uh, this received a start at Bookless Review. Our Shadows Have Claws features 15 original short stories from YA superstars like Yamile Saeed Mendez, Julia Alvarez, Meka and Maritza Mulite, and more. Each story features Latin mythology's most memorable monsters, from zombies to cannibals to death incarnate. This cross-genre anthology offers something for every monster lover. The worlds of these stories are dark, but also magical. It's set across Latin America and its diaspora. This collection offers bold, imaginative stories of oppression, grief, sisterhood, first love, and empowerment in the received starred Berkus Review. Sugaring Off just came out last week. It's a dazzling and evocative novel about love and loss with a bit of a thrilling mystery thrown in for fans of Mindy McGinnis and Courtney Summers. Left partially deaf by an early childhood tragedy that ended in her father's incarceration, 17-year-old Owl is now a tracker, an explorer, a wildlife enthusiast, and always her freest self while hiking the steep forest and acres surrounding her aunt and uncle's maple sugar farm. One day, she confronts a stranger trespassing among the maples, and Owl's shelter existence is blown wide open. Cody, magnetic, dangerous, hired to help with the sugaring off. That's a maple syrup process. Who knew? I didn't know that. Um, Cody, seemed, Cody seems to see her, the real her, in a way that no one else has. Together, they challenge each other, learn to question their preconceptions, and risk a romance that families are desperate to stop. Now. Uh, moving on to things that are coming out in a few months, we have Nerd Crush. Ramona Lambert is a typical shy, artistic 16-year-old. She's a best friend whom she knows since they were in diapers. She has parents who love her, a love for cosplay, a crush on a cute boy in her class. There are a few problems with all these scenarios. Her best friend's just moved away. Her parents don't quite understand her love of cosplay, and she's pretty sure her crush does not know she exists. To escape her troubles, Ramona turns to cosplay and her original character, Rel, who gives her the confidence and freedom that she lacks in real life. Embracing this confidence, she decides to strike up an email conversation with her crush, Caleb, and from her cosplay account in the hopes getting to know him and maybe win his heart. With an important cosplay convention coming up and anxiety of her double life weighing on her, Ramona has to decide if she'll hide behind her cosplay character forever or take the chance and let Caleb see the real her because he might actually like her for who she is. I'll take everything you have. In the summer of 1934, Joe Garb arrives in Chicago with one goal, earn enough money to get out of debt and save the family farm. Joe's cousin sets him up with a hotel job that then proposes a sketchy scheme to make a lot more money fast. While running his con, Joe finds himself splitting time between Eddie, a handsome flirt on a delivery truck, and Raymond a carefree rich kid who shows Joe the eye-opening queer life around every corner of the big city. Joe's exposure to the surface of criminal Chicago pulls him into something darker than he could have imagined. When danger closes in, Joe needs to pack up and get lost. But before he can figure out where to go, he has to decide what, who he wants to be. I'll Take Everything You Have is a vivid portrayal of queer coming of age in Depression-era Chicago and the timeless story of trying to make your future bright when the rest of the world is dead set on keeping it hidden in the dark from award-winning author James Kleist. Fun side note, I was listening to James talk one day and he found a letter in some vintage furniture that he had and it was all about, um, it was from like kids this age and a little bit older who had been living queer lifestyles in Chicago during this time period, which is sort of what set it off and it made him, you know, take a step back and realize that queer culture has existed forever and ever and it's a beautiful thing to like dip into a different part of history. He did it much more justice than I am. <laughs> but if you ever have a chance to hear him talk, I highly recommend it. So you want to be a pop star. Everly Brooks knows she has what it takes to be the next big singer songwriter. The reality singing competition, So You Want to Be a Pop Star, is her chance at proving to the world and herself that her talent and artistry can mean something more than just live streams and online videos. Vinny Vecchie thought he was heading towards a life on the drag stages of New York City, but a powerful voice is a precious thing to waste and in need of money to make his drag dreams come true, so you want to be a pop star is the next best thing. When a group performance on the show goes viral overnight, Everly and Vinny find their careers unexpectedly tied together. 
Along with their competitors, these five artists are forced to become the newest pop supergroup, Jewel Tones. In this interactive novel, the reader gets to make choices that will make or break Everly, Vinny, and the group's meteoric rise. Unlike the traditional format of Choose Your Own Adventure books, jumping back and forth in the book as readers make plot choices, this book offers an unupdated format that feels more mature and will allow readers to make choices to develop the protagonist's personalities and relationships as well as the plot while always moving forward like a more traditional novel. Breakup Makeup. Eli Peterson is a self-taught up-and-coming makeup artist in the cosplay scene who's barely making ends meet. While they may be slaying it with their breathtaking looks, they're also trying to save enough money for top surgery and convince their parents that their artistic dream is worthwhile. During a convention, Eli hears about Makeup Wars, a competition that could change everything since the grand prize is a scholarship to the best special effects school on the West Coast. But can Eli go up against the most talented up-and-coming makeup artists in the scene, including rival influencer Zachary Miller, who also happens to be their ex-boyfriend? Eli will have to juggle their makeup brushes, their rekindled feelings for Zach, and their self-doubt in order to win everything they've ever wanted. Written by a non-binary author, this novel brings a level of authenticity and honesty to the YA market and also allows a wider breadth of readers to see themselves reflected in the genre. And finally, Make the Fireflies Dance, which I constantly am just singing that song by Sixpence None the Richer. So if you are around my age, takes you right back to She's All That. Quincy Walker is a hopeless romantic, so when she's kissed by a stranger in a dark theater, her rom-com obsessed imagination begins plotting the perfect movie version ending to her senior year, which, like all great high school romances, ends with the prom. With the help of her friends, Operation Mystery Kisser is born, a plan to set Quinn up on dates with all the guys who were at the theater that night so she can discover who kissed her. The only problem, her friends insist on blind dates and Quinn hates letting go of control. As prom draws near, Quinn is no longer closer to finding who her mystery kisser was, and she's not sure she wants to continue looking. Maybe it's her dad's failing health or her brother's absence, or maybe it's the fact that she's fighting with her best friend, or that she's falling for a guy who definitely is not the one that she's been looking for. This is the perfect read for any YA romance fan, especially those looking for a fast-paced, easy and fun summer read, a la Morgan Matson. That's it for me. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Um, I am bringing us home. So let me. Uh, one sec. <laughs> okay. So my name is Emily Day and I am here with Macmillan and I'm so excited to share some upcoming YA titles from Wednesday Books, Flatiron Books, and Tortine. Um, this is how you can get in touch with me. If you need anything, uh, please feel free to let me know. We have, um, most of our titles are on Edelweiss or NetGalley, um, but we, um, we do have a few um, limited copies of physical arcs. So if there's anything that you want, please send me an email and I will do what I can. All right, first up. Swift the Storm, Fierce the Flame by Meg Long. Uh, Remy Castle is hellbent on finding the friend that she lost, but her planet is on the brink of total destruction and there's only one way to find answers amidst the chaos. She must team up with a traitor to help stage a revolution, and in exchange, he'll tell her exactly where her lost friend is. With a giant hellstorm that encircles the planet, growing stronger by the minute, and the entire planet on the edge of an all-out war, Remy will have to decide just how far she's willing to go to save one girl before the impending storm drowns them all. Begin Again by Emma Lord, another unforgettable YA from beloved best-selling author, Emma Lord, author of Tweet Cute, and you have a match and when you get the chance. This time, uh, this book is set during the uncertain time in life that is freshman year of college. Reminiscent of Legally Blonde and the X-Talk, this laugh out loud funny novel features friends who feel like family, a vulnerable take on college life, and a main character who is determined to find her path against all the odds. Hand this one to fans of Fresh and Again But Better. 
Hex You by mother and daughter powerhouse duo PC and Kristen Cast. This is the third and last book in the trilogy about twin witches. Twin sisters Mercy and Hunter are witches, direct descendants of the Good family, the founders of their town. After the murder of their mother at the hands of a foul demon, they have become the protectors of the gates to different underworlds, ancient porters between ancient portals between their world and realms where mythology rules and the darkest of creatures exist. With the gates weakening with every passing day, deadly creatures have been set free on the residents of Goodville. It will take everything in Mercy and Hunter's power to seal the gates once and for all. Wild Blood by Lauren Blackwood. New York Times bestselling author Lauren Blackwood returns. 18 year old Victoria is a wild blood. After being kidnapped at the age of six and manipulated by a touring company, she is someone who uses magic to protect travelers in a Jamaican jungle that is overrun with monsters. When she's charged with a dangerous mission through the treacherous jungle, she must find the strength to defeat the demons of the jungle, as well as her own demons, to find where she truly belongs. Always the Almost by debut author Edward Underhill. If you, like I did, fell in love with Heartstopper earlier this year, this heartfelt debut about love and acceptance is the perfect book to read while you anxiously await for season two. 16-year-old trans boy Miles has exactly two New Year's resolutions. Number one, win back his ex-boyfriend. And number two, beat his arch nemesis at the classical piano competition. Unfortunately, neither of these things are as easy as he wants them to be. When a new boy arrives in town, Eric, a queer cartoonist from Seattle, he and Miles decide to fake date to score an invitation to a Valentine's Day party until the fake part turns into a very real kiss. Now, with the piano competition looming, Miles isn't sure what he wants, but the only way to figure it out is to be himself. Where Darkness Blooms by Andrea Hanna. The town of Bishop is known for a few things, wind storms, a field of sunflowers, and women that go missing. So when three more women disappear in the midst of a storm, no one in town questions it, the case grows cold and life moves on, even as their daughters are left behind. But when a windstorm disaster reveals secrets at the mother's memorial, the girls are left questioning what they know about their town. Can they discover what truly happened the night their mothers left and uncover the secrets that the town is hiding to prevent it from happening again? This is perfect for fans of Courtney Summers, Shay Earnshaw, and Courtney Gold. Immortality, a love story by Dana Schwartz is the eagerly anticipated sequel to the number one best-selling Gothic romance, Anatomy. Um, I have to call out this cover. It's one of my favorites, as was Anatomy. Absolutely stunning. I love them. Hazel Sinnott is alone and half convinced the events of the year before were a figment of her imagination. She doesn't even know if Jack is alive or dead. As Hazel's work entangles her more and more with the British court, she realizes that her own future as a, nurse, as a surgeon isn't the only thing at stake for her. Malicious forces are at work in the monarchy and Hazel may be the only one capable of setting things right. Missing Clarissa by Ripley Jones. In August, 1999, popular cheerleader Clarissa Campbell went missing from, from a party in the woods, never to be seen again. The case captured the attention of the nation and it seemed like everyone who knew her had something to hide. 20 years later, the case has grown cold until two best friends from the town where Clarissa went missing decide to start up their own investigation through their own true crime podcast. Will they find the real killer or put an innocent person behind bars? This is perfect for fans of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Sadie. The Renaissance of Gwen Hathaway by Ashley Shoemaker. Ever since her mother passed away, Gwen Hathaway is committed to making sure nothing in her life will ever change again, including the Ren Fair circuit she works with her dad. But when she arrives at the last stop of the circuit, her mother's favorite, she finds out that the new management has changed the fair completely. To top it all off, the new owner's son, Arthur, is determined to be friends with her. Despite the fair being drastically different from what it was uh, when her mother was alive, she finds herself having fun and realizes that maybe change doesn't always have to be bad. This is for fans of Dumplin' and Well Met. The Witch and the Vampire by Francesca Flores is a queer Rapunzel retelling with a paranormal romance for fans of the Hazelwood and Serpent and Dove. 
Ava and Kay were best friends until a fateful night two years ago when vampires broke through the barrier protecting their town, killing Kay's mother and turning Ava into a vampire. Now, the two are sworn enemies. Ever since that night, Ava's been trapped inside with her mother, Eugenia, and Kay, a new flame witch, has been training to fulfill her duty of killing vampires, which includes Ava. When Ava escapes her confinement, Kay follows her into the forest, planning to eventually turn her in, and Ava agrees to travel with Kay in hopes of rekindling their friendship and the romantic feelings she had started to feel two years prior. But the woods are full of danger, and the two become both each other's greatest threat and greatest hope if they want to make it out alive. Uh, Into the Light by Marco Shiro. 17-year-old Louis Sullivan believes his life is relatively normal. He does his chores, loves his family, and tries to represent his community, the ones who are good and who live as part of the reconciliation, staying safe on the compound and resisting evil. What Luis doesn't realize is that evil is already inside the compound and has always been there. He must decide, along with his friends, whether to follow the rules or go rogue and continue to live for a better future. A coming, this is a coming-of-age story about the secrets families tell to keep each other close that's part thriller and part love story. Also a gorgeous cover. You Wouldn't Dare by Samantha Markham. Gilmore Girls meets You Have a Match in this rom-com about trying to have the summer of your life before everything changes, only to realize change is exactly what you need. When Junie kissed Graham for the first time, she had no idea that it would nearly be the end of their friendship. Now, months later, their friendship has been tenuously mended, but Junie's feelings may just ruin things once and for all. This rom-com about the risks and triumphs of first love is perfect for fans of The Summer I Turned Pretty. Blood Debts by Terry J. Benton Walker. 30 years ago, a woman was murdered, a family was lynched, and New Orleans watched the largest magical massacre in its history. Right after the massacre, a throne was stolen from a queen. On the anniversary of these events, twin heirs Clement and Christina are mourning their father and caring for their sick mother until they realize that their mother is not sick, but instead cursed by someone who will come after them next. Now the twins have to work together and use their family's magic to solve the decades old murder that set off tensions between the magical and non-magical communities in New Orleans before something worse can happen. This is perfect for fans of All of Us Villains and Legendborn. Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Shadow and Bone meets lore in this epic enemies to lovers fantasy novel filled with hope and heartbreak and the unparalleled power of love. When two young rival journalists find love through a magical connection, they must face the depths of hell in a war among gods to seal their fate forever. Hand this to fans of the strong protagonist in Fable, the blend of fantasy and historical fiction in Lovely War, and the mesmerizing world and unforgettable characters of the invisible life of Addie LaRue. Ander and Santi were here by Johnny Garza Villa. Ander Lopez was born and raised in the Santos Vista neighborhood of San Antonio, Texas. As they're preparing to leave for art school in Chicago, they start to wonder if they are really ready to leave it all behind. But when new waiter Santiago Garcia is hired to work at the family's taqueria, and Ander begins taking more shifts to spend time with him, and Ander begins to understand more about who they are and what they want to be. It's all so easy and effortless until one day when ICE agents show up outside Ander's house in search of Santi, ready to rip them apart and show them just how fragile home can be. This is Aristotle and Dante meets The Sun is Also a Star. Promises Stronger Than Darkness by Charlie Jane Anders is the final installment of the international best-selling YA series, Unstoppable. With only a ragtag band of misfits, crewmates, earthlings, friends, lovers, and one annoying frenemy, the unstoppable crew are up against the universe, and they soon find that in order to survive, they may have to cross a line they vowed never to cross. Ruling Destiny by Allison Noel. The Da Vinci Code meets Riverdale, set in a unique boarding school in this next installment of the Stealing Infinity series from number one New York Times bestselling author, Alison Noel. This sequel is full of time travel adventures, dangerous secrets, and swoony romance. 
Last Sunrise in Eterna by Amparo Ortiz. Fans of Holly Black will love Amparo Ortiz's new Regency portal fantasy adventure and its magical Caribbean setting. To help support her family, 17-year-old Seven Burgos must hunt for elf corpses to sell. But on one of her hunts, Seven captures the elf prince Aro. The prince manages to escape her and leaves behind a ring with a message. The prince of Eterna is in danger. This ring will save him. Return it and your mother lives. With her mom missing, Seven must enter the magical home of the elves and find a prince whose fate might be more tied to hers than she ever suspected. And lastly, Take a Bow, Noah Mitchell by Tobias Madden. In this hilarious and heartwarming queer rom-com, a lonely gamer joins the community theater to get his online crush to love him IRL. Fans of Sophie Gonzalez, Emma Lord, and Dahlia Adler will love this funny coming of age story that takes readers through the ups and downs of first love and ultimately shows that love can be friendship, family, and the love one has for oneself. All right, that is it from me and from all of us. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, we're so happy to be able to share some of our upcoming titles with you all. Um, again, feel free to reach out if you have any questions about anything that we presented. And um, I hope you have a great day. Bye, everybody.